Welcome everyone to the Lost World Museum. My name is John Adolfi and we are going to have a little bit of fun tonight. Just to let you know what we do on this channel and on these lives is we ask the politically correct question, where did we come from? Did we come from an ape-like creature three to four million years ago? Or was it aliens? Did we come from aliens? Or did they have some part of their involvement or evolvement? Or as 40% of those in the United States still believe, did we come from Adam and Eve some six to 10,000 years ago? That's the question. Why do we bother even asking it? One good reason. You may have not thought about this for many, many years. You may have already decided in college or grade school or some kind of profession, have thought about it or maybe just in passing and already came to some sort of conclusion. Well, did you know what all three theories or worldviews mean or what they all are, I'm be I believe that some of you may not. And that's the whole purpose of this. Educate on what, you, what each of these worldviews are or believe to be, and then let you maybe re-decide, revisit this question. Where did we come from? Welcome to this, uh, this, this episode. We're going to talk about stalactites and stalagmites, okay? And I want to welcome everyone here that is on the live with us here today. And what we're going to talk about is the stalactites, stalagmites of the caves. Maybe some of you have been in Mammoth Cave or Carlsbad Caverns or perhaps even um, uh, the caverns there in, in New York State, which escaped me. I've been there. Um, it'll come to me. But those caves that you go deep into the ground and you see the stalactites and stalagmites, those are those columns of white, usually white or off-white material that come down to a point or come up from the ground. House caverns. Got it. <laughs> House caverns in eastern New York. There we go. So how long does it take to form them? That's the question. Now, if you go on those tours, they are going to give you an, a geological, evolutionary, geological, long periods of time uh, answer to that question. They'll say that they are hundreds of thousands of years. They may even say that they're millions of years old. How old are they, though? And do we have any evidence as to how old they are? Well, I'm going to show you a few things today. And the purpose of showing you these, what I believe to be considered rapid growth uh, stalactites or stalagmites or the same material that is made up of, their, of, of those is to show you that under certain conditions, rapid formation can take place and not thousands of years or hundreds of years, but maybe years, possibly months, weeks. No way. Yes way. Are you ready? I'm going to take you on a ride. Here we go. All right. First thing I want to show you is probably one of the most coolest. And yet, maybe you won't feel the impact on this one. Let's try. There is a riverbank that had cave formations on it. What does that mean? Let me show you. <clears throat> this right here, and I know this is in backwards vision, this right here is the river bank. And coming off of the river bank are minerals. Now you're saying, where is this? This is in the Grand River, Ontario, Paris, Ontario in Canada. And water would come off of this and it would form little stalactites and st little stalagmites. Interesting, huh? Well, okay. What does that mean? Well, here I'm going to show you actual samples from the river. In that little concave or caved area, they form in there and then every five to ten years they get completely wiped out because the river overflows. Been doing that for decades. So we know that when the river gets strong, it wipes all those formations out and then they have to form over again. So the average age of the formation that I'm about to show you is going to be approximately seven years old. So how much of a stalactite or a stalagmite can form in, say, seven years? I'm going to show you. These were taken from the Grand River 
on the little cave that's on the side of the bank. And these were done in seven years, approximately. Take a good look at them. And maybe it's actually this way. <laughs> but regardless, what does this tell us? Now, I've gotten online. I'm not a geologist. I don't believe you need to be in order to be able to read and to ask questions and to find things out. That's how you become a geologist. I got online and it's very scant as to the formation of stalactites and stalagmites. Now these were formed in seven years and you're looking at stalactites, stalagmites that are a good three inches, about three inches, maybe slightly over three inches. Now don't worry, I'm going to show you other stuff and let's all be fair about this. Understand that stalactites and stalagmites, the formation of them, mainly limestone, um, it depends on the concentration of the mineralization of the water. What do I mean by that? Either there's more grains in there in order to produce this effect or there's less grains. There's also the water flow. Flow. Does it drip one or does it flow? It's going to speed up the process. Here's the thing. Nobody was in those caves. Carlsbad, House Caverns, Mammoth Cave. Nobody was in there to see it happen. If there was an acceleration of geological process that took place in that cave that we are completely unaware of, could it be that those stalactites and stalagmites that can be anywhere between 5, 10, 15, 20 or more feet long could be done in a short period of time? And if it can be done in a short period of time, and it was a short period of time, then does this not, here's the premise, premise, conclusion, does this not support the idea of geology on this earth being somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to 10,000 years, as opposed to hundreds of thousands or millions? That's where we're getting at. But before you think I'm absolutely loony and that perhaps I'm setting you up, let me show you more to show you what I'm talking about. Now, as I went to the internet and gathered the best information I could on Google from respected sites, these are not creationist sites. These are sites that believe in long periods of time, evolutionary geology. I was able to amass together three different rates of uh, accretion or, or accumulation, okay? Three and a half inches at the very quickest, would take 30 years. Fair enough. That's pretty quick. 30 years, three and a half inches. That means about an inch every decade. Okay? And you know what? That fits nicely with the Grand River formations if they do accumulate that quickly. But what is a fast rate? And is this considered a fast rate just because it's three inches and it's seven years? We don't know. That's the problem. We don't know where this, this three and a half inches times 30 years as a faster rate is coming from. Nobody explains it, but that's okay. Let's continue on. I want to show you just exactly how quickly these things can accelerate. Case in point, this is a French Coke bottle from France. And I sent it Actually, I actually ordered them, uh, ordered the Coke bottle from France, from a company in France that specializes in um, soaking things in a calcite bath, the same material that produces stalactites and stalagmites. They will take a rubber mold and they will put it underneath this. It's more than a trickle, to be fair, okay? It's kind of a stream of water coming down. And this right here, that is three eighths of an inch, and it took six months to produce this. This came from a rubber mold, and it is pure, unadulterated calcite material, the same material that you see in the stalactites and stalagmites in the caves. Six months, three eighths of an inch. I'm going to show you a couple of other things that are even more startling than that. 
The same cave that prepares these, I asked them to take a Coke bottle and to put the Coke bottle in their bath. All right. Now I'm going to weigh this Coke bottle and tell you how much it weighs because I'm going to show you the before and after. So I've got a, uh, a um, scale here and I'm going to do this in ounces. That's okay with you. And this bottle weighs approximately 14 ounces. Okay. 14 ounces. Now taking this bottle and putting it under the calcite bath in France, this is what I got back from them after only five weeks. Okay. Five weeks of soaking or, or allowing the water to drip at a pretty good rate on the Coke bottle. Interesting, isn't it? That's about five centimeters of material. The exact same bottle, but this was put under the bath for five weeks. Five weeks. How old are stalactites and stalagmites? Interesting. Now, one of our um, one of our uh, museum enthusiasts uh, said, "I got something you might be interested in." I said, "Well, send it along." So we did. Before I do that, we shared with you what the upper end is as far as speed. Okay, 3.5 inches in 30 years, but the slower rate is 3.5 inches in 677 years. And another site that said four inches or 3.9 inches in 1,000 years. 1,000 years. That means that one inch equals 250 years. One of our museum enthusiasts sent us this. This appears to be calcite. You can see the ripples right there. So it was most likely dripped upon. Okay. It's about almost two inches thick at the bottom, about an inch at the top. But look what's in it. It's an iron nail and not a square nail. It's a, a regular round iron nail that's slightly rusted. And this was in this. How long does a stalactite or a stalagmite take to form? To sum everything up, I just wanted to show you these things. I don't believe anybody's hiding anything from the evolutionary geological community. Matter of fact, they even tell me how much of a dumbo I am because they already knew all of this information. Well, this information is not put forward and I find that very telling. Because if it can accelerate like this, okay, then let's look at it. But then let us draw some conclusions that may be a little uncomfortable from the folks that believe in that the Earth is 4.51 billion years old and that life on Earth is 3 billion years old. And stalactites and stalagmites in those caves are anywhere between 100,000 to a million years old. That we can actually say, you know what? Under the right conditions, those stalactites and stalagmites could form within 10, 100, maybe 1,000 years. But I don't think you're going to see them say that because it weakens their or casts some kind of doubt on their position. And I think that's the case. I could be wrong. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. And I would like to uh, give you an opportunity to get one of our free reports. And the free report is called The Three Top Reasons. Sorry, you can't read that. The three top reasons why Noah's Ark must exist. How do you get that? You just go to museumalerts.com, sign up for our newsletter, and you can download that for free. I may even send you a free bonus report, so don't be surprised. Go to museumalerts.com and sign up for our newsletter. It comes out once a week, and it's cool. If you like cool or are cool, you're going to want to get the museum newsletter. It comes out Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every week with all sorts of other cool things that you may not even see here. That's right, exclusive for the museum newsletter. All right, there's the free offer. I'm John Adolfi. Thank you very much for joining us at the Lost World Museum's 
uh, site. And we are excited that you took the time to ask the question with us while looking at some very unusual or cool evidence. Did we come from an ape-like creature three to four million years ago? Or were aliens involved in our evolution? Or did we come from Adam and Eve? You guys have a great day and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.